What's up guys and welcome to Dota Regions. This is going to be a little bit of a change of pace, although with familiar faces. This is going to be another best of two between Union Gaming and Not Today. And it's uh, yeah, just going to be best of two. We're going to be following Not Today for a couple more of these. So if you have any uh, fans of Not Today in the chat, then you are going to be happy because this is going to be a day of South American Dota. That's what Dota Regions is all about. This leg of it, at least, is all about the South American teams. And, uh, well, hopefully it's going to be a good one. I'm Mike Loris. I'm here on Hefla TV 2 bringing this game to you along with Grandis V. Yeah, it's not joined Dota League, which is what we're used to seeing, but it is pretty much the same format. It's best of twos, and it is with uh, teams that we're very familiar with. Um, so Not Today versus Union Gaming. This should be a pretty even matchup, or at least a good one to watch. Um, let's see. I'll say a favor Not Today, but I think a lot's going to come down to the draft. And right now... Mm, nothing too unconventional in the draft so far. Viper, Tidehunter banned out by Not Today. Lycanthrope Razor banned out by Union Gaming. The first two bans coming out from Not Today are a bit peculiar, and they're going to leave the Death Prophet first pick for Union Gaming to snag up. But it's nothing too crazy. Yeah, we have a couple more games down the line, and as far as games today that are going to be playing, uh, that are going to be getting played, uh, I would say Not Today versus Union Gaming is probably the most even. Uh, these two teams are very similar in power level, and Not Today, ha, huh, they're going to go with Brewmaster and Centaur Warrunner. I've seen them do this, like, so many times now, and it's just really great to watch. You have the very aggressive play from both these blinking stompers, and, well, if you get really close to the Death Prophet and burst her down, then suddenly Exorcism is not really a threat any longer, so it's a nice aggressive start for Not Today, though Union Gaming... They're going to go for the Intelligence Heroes instead of the Strength Heroes. Going to get one of their two supports up online. Yeah, with the Skyrath Mage. I think that Not Today are pretty much in their comfort zone with these first two picks. I'm not sure there's anything that they'd rather get uh, than these two. They're just so comfortable running with them, and it works out for them very well. They're able to uh, find solo pickups very easily. They have the global support with those Blink Daggers. Um... But then again, Union Gaming aren't slouching either with their first two picks. They have some pushing power from Death Prophet, some magical burst from the Skyrath Mage. They're missing some teamfight initiation and lockdown. Currently, they only have the silence on the uh, Death Prophet and Skyrath Mage, which is fairly reliable up against the Brewmaster, but doesn't phase the Centaur that much. Um, so yeah, we'll see. Not today. They're going to take a very smart ban in the face of Void, who was let through the pool, but not prioritized that highly by either side. Is going to get the boot. Would have been a fantastic pickup. For Union Gaming, probably like the best hero that they could possibly want, but they're not going to get it. And now, not today, they're going to have banned out from them a whole bunch of sport heroes. I expect to see another ban of a, another sport hero here from Union Gaming, as they already have the Skyrath Mage to support. And not today, they're unlikely to ban out another support. I would say possibly a Shaker ban would be uh, worthwhile for not today, seeing as though they have two melee heroes already on the field, and or Shaker does get a lot better with that. But instead, it's going to be a Pugna ban for Union Gaming. I mean, Centaur, Warrunner, Brewmaster don't really lend themselves to the largest of push strategies, but they do provide a very bulky front line, and Pugna can hide behind that and push towers all by himself, doesn't really need any uh, allies to help him push. Yeah, I think it would have been a solid pick and would have been able to uh, sort of counteract the push coming up from the Death Prophet and Union Gaming. Um, I don't know, just something they don't want to deal with. The band instead of the Earthshaker is going to be the Wraith King from Not Today. I think the Earthshaker is a little bit scarier than the Wraith King, to be honest. Um, both are some pretty solid, stunning uh, melee supports. Um, but the Earthshaker Fissure can be very disruptive for the melee heroes that Not Today have already picked up. Um, let's see, Not Today, they're probably going to want to pick themselves up some supports right now. Rubik is still left in the pool and might be a choice for them. Also, they're probably looking for their safe lane farmer still left, and that might also be an option for them. Um, but I think picking up the supports is probably your safest bet right now. Yeah, use these two picks that you have in sequence to shore up your supports. So, uh, Because they do have two melee heroes already, they're going to be prioritizing ranged heroes. So Earthshaker does get a little less appealing for not today, though against Death Prophet Skyrath Mage, it's all well and good. They're going to get that ranged support, and the Ancient Apparition won't really have the best of setups or anything like that. I mean, you usually want to have a range done in order to set up for an Ancient Apparition Cold Feed, or at the very least have... A heroes, heroes that can follow up very well with the Chilling Touch. Centaur Warrunner and Brewmaster are not those heroes until later on. The uh, lack of mobility from these two heroes and the fact that they have to walk up and then start with their stuns and damage is going to really slow down Not Today's lanes, so their secondary support has to be someone with a Disable. I'm thinking along the lines of Rubik Ventral Spirit. Uh, just getting the Centaur and Brewmaster closer to the target means that Ancient Apparition is going to be a lot more effective. Yeah. 
This Ancient Apparition, once he does get his level 6, the global ganking power coming out from his Centaur Werner and Ancient Apparition is pretty solid. Blink of Stomp Double Edge with an Ancient Apparition Ice Blast on top. There are very few heroes that can survive through that vo uh, volley. Also, um, we're probably going to see Union Gang pick up a mech. Uh, right now, I would say Death Prophet's the hero to pick it up. Um, if they don't snag any other heroes, a lot of the South American teams will purchase the mechanism on their Death Prophet. And also negating the heal from the Exorcism Spirits coming back if it is a very elongated fight. Which honestly, not today, aren't um, going to be too happy with. Is they'll probably want to uh, burst on targets very quickly. Um, could be important, but Doom, the next pickup for Union Gaming, he's weaseled his way through the second banning stage, and they're going to have another really solid silence up against not today. He is a hero that does get shut down a little bit more by the Ancient Apparition, but yeah, Doom is you can't really go wrong with Doom, and especially when you have a Skyrath Mage Death Prophet, their lineup pretty much just screams versatility right now. Like they could take this into a little bit of a longer game. They could try to rush it down early, and ooh, not today. They're going to go for a lone druid. I mean, that's going to be their core farmer. Uh, he's going to be most likely paired with the support that not today have yet to pick up, but we saw Ewo's lone druid the other day, and, well, he got completely shut down, but ultimately the rest of the team carried it, so not today. They are going to be running a very much so 4 protect 1 kind of lineup with this Brewmaster Centaur, Ancient Apparition, and then one other hero getting a lot of space for Lone Druid to farm up, and Lone Druid is rather impervious to the Doom, like you don't really want to be dooming the Druid because it just doesn't do anything. So as far as carries are concerned, it's a pretty safe one versus the Doom, but it really depends a lot on their last support, I think, that will determine how strong this draft is actually for not today. Yeah. The, la or the next pickup for Union Gaming is a Kunkka. Um, Going to make the Doom as well as the Death Prophet a decent bit tankier with the uh, boat buff coming through. Can be disruptive to the initiations coming out from Not Today. It's just another all-around pretty solid hero. He offers some good magical burst as well as good physical burst that scales pretty well late. Um, can be involved in kills early. There's not a whole lot wrong with Kanka. We don't see him very often and right now they don't have the best setup for the uh, torrent right now. Concussive Shot into Torrent's pretty solid um, for ganking but it's nothing along the lines of like a Shadow Demon Disruption. Um, Mm, let's see. As far as not today's last pick is concerned, I'm going to expect the Rubik to be banned out because I think that would probably be the best hero available. It would allow them to go aggressive with the Centaur Warner, I think. Allow the Lone Druid to solo safe farm versus a probable Doom, which would go decently well for the Lone Druid. He might not be able to zone out the Doom very effectively, but the Doom wouldn't be able to pressure the Lone Druid much, if at all. Um, Slark the last ban coming out from not today. That one's actually an interesting one. I'm not sure how they'd expect these lanes to work out from Union Gaming, potentially a roaming Kunkka. Yeah, right now Kunkka is very much so like a Marana in that the support Kunkka is fine, but it's really good if you have setup. And Skyrath Mage Concussive Shot is really the only setup that Union Gaming have right now. Like, that's the actual form of the only form of disable that they have is in the Skyrath Mage Concussive Shot, besides the Kunkka, of course. So, a roaming Kunkka with the Skyrath Mage is perfectly average, I would say, and it's nothing really to write home about, so I'm not sure if this is a support Kunkka just yet. It might be a core, and, well, the last pick from Union Gaming is going to really determine how that's played out. Not today. They're going to pick up another melee hero in the Sand King. I mean, it's a decent enough stun, but uh, I'm going to be concerned for the Sand King as far as him getting close enough for a Burrow Strike, because Union Gaming, they have some pretty quick heroes, and Sand King, when he is low level, that Burrow Strike is rather pathetic, and there's no one else to actually help him out in order to get close enough for a burrow strike so it's gonna be a little bit concerning I think as we now see the last pick for Union Gaming it's going to be a support Kunkka with a core bristleback so getting a lot more bulk in the front lines it's a really nice hero to have versus all the tanky heroes of not today since they usually will not focus the bristleback so that your bristleback could just st slowly start to stack up those quills. Mm, I was kind of holding out for a timber slot pick if they were going to roam that Kunkka as, I don't know, it would have been able to do a lot of work against the Centaur, Brewmaster, and Sand King, but Bristleback kind of going to function in a similar way, um, except his damage is more going to be focused in the physical department. If they don't focus him down, he's going to be a literal thorn in their sides. Um, I don't know, it's, it's an okay pick. I'm not a huge fan of the Union Gaming lineup. It's just a lot of good things kind of all jumbled together. It's not very cohesive in any one direction, but that said, if their individual play is on point, it definitely could work out for them. Yeah, I think it, they're mostly just going to get a whole bunch of strong heroes and hope they gel together and hope their strengths are enough to carry them through because really you kind of don't see a strategy here, especially with this Kunkka pickup. I think if the Skyrath Mage was someone else, someone with a stun, like a Shadow Demon or something like that, then I would say Union Gaming, yes, your lineup is probably a lot better, but 
now it's just a little bit awkward, but we're going to see how it matches up because they're going to their lanes. Union Gaming, they're going to put Benyaz down on bottom as the Doom. The support is going to be Zek standing in, and support's also going to be Zinder on the Skywrath Mage. Cristiano standing in is going to be playing the mid lane Death Prophet, and up on top, most likely going to be alone, is Union Gaming's Bristleback player, Angel. And on Not Today, they are going to be playing on the Dire side with Ewo, handling his lone Druid. He's going to be supported by the Ancient Apparition, played by Mystico, and the Sand King, played by Misoku. I'm going to expect Misoku to play very passively, um, which will not bother the uh, lone Druid much at all. The mid lane is going to be Smash, playing on his Brewmaster, and off lane is going to be Mihawk on the center Warner. Alrighty, we see Not Today solidifying this lane up on top just a little bit more for Ewo. Really, if it is... Uh... Uh, just a 1v1 matchup versus the Bristleback for the Lone Druid. That should be a pretty nice matchup for him. And we already did see a Sentry Ward being placed down and killed, killing off an Observer for the uh, UG side that they already placed. And now, oh, unfortunately, the Sentries are going to be... Well, the Sentries are going to be dewarded as well. They're trying to get this hard camp blocked, I suppose. But Misoku, as well as Misko, on the ball as far as protecting this lane from any sort of enemy vision. So I expect not today to have this top lane pretty much on full lockdown. Conversely, on the bottom end, the Kunkka is going to be farming. Uh, I think he's just going to take the first couple of waves of experience while the Doom finds a creep. But Centaur in this lane is going to have a much easier time. A Kunkka is a melee support, and though Skyrath Mage is rotating in, it's uh, going to be a much easier time for Mihawk than it is going to be for Angel. Yeah, I would say so as well. The Scarath Mage, he spent a lot of his time early on where he probably could have just passed off the words to the Bristleback. And now, speaking of him, he's going to get jumped on by a Burst Strike that actually connects him with the Chilling Touch. It's going to be enough damage. They'll be able to draw first blood here and Ewo picking that up. This is a wonderful start for Not Today. That's incredibly surprising that the Sand King got close enough for that because, really I mean, is. Angel doesn't have boost, Sentai? but okay, well, they're going to go down on bottom again. My bad, guys. Uh, they don't have boots on Angel, and Sand King, unless he was invisible, which couldn't have been the case, he shouldn't be getting close enough to the enemy to actually land that Burst Strike, but they're just going to gun for him one more time. Burst Strike, that range is going to land. Now the Cold Feet and the Chilling Touch is a lot of damage onto this Bristleback. I don't think it's going to be enough this time, but it is going to bring the Bristleback very, very low. This Not Today side, they're just turning up the aggression very, very early on, and it's not really what you see from a lone Druid ordinarily, because the bear... Before he gets his entangle, is not that useful. Yeah, Angel is able to salve up, and he's going to be sitting in this lane, but Masoku has five extra movement speed over that Bristleback, so I suppose if you just run at him enough, he'll be able to get in range for that Burrow Strike. Honestly, it shouldn't be happening. Um, but yeah, Angel not having a very fun time. Uh, currently, the Sand King is going to be running the pulling operations for them. Might have been better time spent uh, stacking some of his camps in the jungle. Um, but yeah, this Bristleback is going to be kept at arm's length, and even if they don't actually kill him again, he's not going to be able to put much pressure on this Lone Druid. And Lone Druid's the one who's going to be doing the pressuring with Boots and Orb of Venom on the bear. As soon as he does get that point in Entangle, the Bristleback needs to be very careful. Yeah, having that additional Entangle potential to add on to the Cold Feet disable. And the Cold Feet didn't land last time, but uh, it's because the Sand King was holding on to his Burrow Strike at, until a very awkward time, so Angel up on top has to be very, very careful about how he plays out this lane. Mihawk is a little, kind of the same way. He's only a level 1 centaur and is being zoned out a lot more than I thought. Benyaz is going to get a free time farming down on bottom, so this Doom wouldn't be surprised to see a Hand of Midas pick up for him just because he is getting such an easy time. And really, Kunkka, Scarath Mage, I mean, any two heroes could be doing this right now. They're just zoning out the centaur. I expect soon enough they're going to be looking for a kill over on mid lane because Smash is having a relatively easy time versus the Death Prophet. They're even in the CS, but... Uh, the Brewmaster is going to be more than okay with that. He's just gunning for his level 6, and once that happens, the team fight from Not Today is going to start to ramp up. And also, Brewmaster is going to look for the Blink Dagger, whereas the Death Prophet doesn't really have a huge spike of power like the Blink Dagger on the Brew. Yeah, her biggest spike of power is when she hits that level 11, but that's quite a ways away, and we're not going to see that for a long time. And it's not something as reliable or... As team fighty as Smash's Blink Dagger, and his Blink Dagger should come out at a decent timing. For now, both offlaners are more or less completely zoned out. The center actually roaming, currently level one. Mihawk just not finding anything on this map. The Bristleback, in comparison, is having a much better time. Both of them have died once, and the Bristleback has managed to find himself level three. Um, I have no idea what the Centaur is trying to accomplish. The Death Prophet in mid, there's very little chance that he'll be able to get in range for his stomp, so I'm not sure if he's actually getting anything done. 
Yeah, I think you should just try to be stacking or something, just so that once Sand King actually tries to go and clear camps, then Centaur could probably get some experience off of that. A Haste Rune is probably the best bet that Mihawk could possibly ask for. And now Angel might be in a little trouble, however, it's going to be Cristiano who didn't realize the Haste Rune got stolen. And now the Hoofstomp potential is there, however, Brewmaster is nowhere to be seen. This is a level 1 hero chasing down a level 5 hero. I guarantee you're not going to see this that often. Mihawk, though, might be getting a little bit over his head. If he gets X Mark, he may very well go down. There it is. X Mark is there, and it's going to bring him back into a torrent. Instantly bring Mihawk down. A little bit over aggressive, but in the meantime, top lane, level 2 Burrow Strike did land on the Bristleback, and that was enough to kill him off. So it is going to be one for one trade, off lane for off lane, but this Centaur is just so crippled in this in his lack of lane, really. Masoku, where are you going? Get out of there, Masoku. He's going to get hit with a torrent. That was just free-handed. Burst strike out, but I don't think it's going to save him from the birds. No, it won't. Now, Iwo hit with a concussive shot. The bear is also dropping very low. If they lose the bear, that could be pretty bad. I mean, Iwo looks like he is going to potentially survive. The bear is going to die, though. That's 300 gold going the way of the Skyrath Mage, who was almost brought down by Misko, but just not enough damage on this Ancient Apparition. is inherently a low-damage hero without the cooldowns. And, well, it's going to be a pretty nice win there, but mid lane it is going to be Cristiano, who is going to get split upon by the Brewmaster. Looking for another rock, the Jukes from the Death Prophet, not quite going to be enough. One more punch from the Fire Spirit should do it. There it is, a solo kill for the Brewmaster over in the mid lane. This game is turning into quite the bloodbath pretty early on. Yeah, I wasn't expecting it to be this aggressive. I think that the heroes that can make the most happen are the Skyrath Mage and the Kunkka, but they've been... Pretty passive until the top. The top tier 1 tower is going to fall to Lone Druid. Despite losing his bear, he's still well on his way towards for whatever he wants to buy. Phase Boots over Venom on the bear. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, really liking his build here. The bear can, I don't know, just be a monster. If it can be able to chase down heroes. And with the Phase Boots over Venom, you are going to have that uptime on your auto attacks. And also Lone Druid sitting on 1500 gold, whether that's uh, Midas, it's, uh, or it's going to be the uh, Tranquil Boots for himself. Um, which it looks like that's where he's going to head with it. Um, either way, it's going to be a lot of gold on Ewo for now, and he'll be looking good. This uh, Lone Druid should be getting online at a pretty decent click. Crucially for the Centaur War Runner, he's found a little bit of time on the bottom lane to get a couple levels up. He's now level 3, isn't that much of a useful jump in power, level 1 for level 3, but he is going toe-to-toe -to -toe for the Doom, and Doom, I don't know if he could actually kill the Centaur, like, even if he does throw the Doom onto the Centaur, he's gonna need a lot of help in order to bring this horse down, so Centaur is gonna get a lot of free space on this bottom lane, actually, as the supports have completely left that lane. Now, Doom does have a hand of Midas as well as Devour, so not today, they have done absolutely nothing in order to stop this Doom, so he's going to be, you know, stacked with gold very, very shortly, but still, even with the, the hand of Midas and the Devour, Lone Druid is on the top of the gold chart. Having two kills kind of does that for you. And UG, they haven't done anything to slow down the Lone Druid either. And I would say in the late game situation, Lone Druid is probably a bit more terrifying than the Doom, especially since, uh, well, you're not going to Doom the Spirit Bear, and what are you going to do to the Spirit Bear? Throw him up into the air with Yules is probably your best bet, but I don't know if that's exactly what Death Prophet wants to be doing with her Yule Scepter. Smash, crucially, has picked up a 7-minute Blink Dagger, has also not been stopped at all by the UG side, and now he's going to use this Blink Dagger with a final split that's very close to being refreshed. He's going to put some serious pressure on the UG side, although up on top they're looking for smoke. Dyer's Curry. Um, yeah, it died. I have no idea where it was. It neutrals was killed by it. neutrals because Masoku aggroed it with the Sandstorm. That was carrying the bottle back to the Brewmaster. That's actually a big loss. And while well, Union Gamer are going to know the Courier died, and if they check Smash's his inventory, they should know that he is missing his bottle, and that's also going to be a lot of wasted time for the Brewmaster, where he has to walk back to base to get that Blink Dagger. That's actually a huge loss. That's at least a minute of time where Smash wants to be using his ultimate, where he just can't. Okay, there are some things in Dota that, like, have been in Dota for ages and that make sense, but this is one of those things that you just see it and you call BS. Because really, like, neutrals, that shouldn't have that big of a swing, and that is... Although avoidable, and I guess not, are kind of careless to make that happen. They're going to go for Mihawk down on bottom, by the way. Already doomed up, and he got X-Torrented. But that's just, like, so BS, and Brewmaster is so crippled by that. I don't know if the Radiant team get gold for having the Dire Courier die, because they didn't kill it. But uh, who knows? Angel on the top lane is also going to be got upon. He's going to get entangled, and the Primal Split has already been used, so... Smash is going to uh, go without his bottle for just a little while longer, but because he doesn't have this bottle, he actually doesn't have enough mana to continue on with his aggression. So this is a hugely crippling move from the Not Today, or I guess the neutral camps. Yeah, well, Smash, he was able to show off that Blink Dagger for the first time. I'm not sure what he's going to be doing for now, as he can't really go for another kill. Um, I don't know, maybe if he uses his stick charges, he'll have a clap, and that's 
Nice, I suppose, but it's just not enough. Lone Druid left alone up top for the time being. Currently at the top of the net worth chart, or um, not the net worth chart, excuse me, at the top of the CS board. Net worth is held by the Doom because of the Midas and Devourer running. Um, even though he's a couple of creeps behind, just that a little bit of acceleration of farm. Doom currently sitting on Drums Midas as well as uh, Boots and Basilius. Uh, looking pretty good for himself, and that's not going to change anytime soon. This Doom is not going to be slowed down by anything. Currently sitting on the Ice Armor Creep, it's decent, although a lot of the damage currently from Not Today is magical. I think getting a different Creep would be more helpful if he can find it. Uh, let's see, does he have anything interesting available in his own jungle? Not particularly. Well, I'm sure he'll find a wolf soon enough or something like that. Not today. I liked what they were doing for a little bit. They gave Ancient Apparition a whole bunch of space in the middle lane to farm up, just to try to get that level 6 a little bit faster for him. Once the Ancient Apparition gets to level 6, then, well, he's pretty much just topped out. Like, as far as supports go, he doesn't get another huge spike of power until he gets another point in that ultimate. They're going to look for Mihawk down bottom, although I don't think they can get him without the Kunkka being here. Again, the lack of disables is really going to make killing off the Centaur very difficult, who's going to be very close to his stampede. Still the score sits 4-4 four to four, and the supports are getting a good amount on both sides I would say. But really it's up to Smash to uh, try to dictate the pace of the game for not today. He's going to be calling the shots as UG with the Doom having the Anamitis and the Devour is going to be more than happy to just chill for as long as he could possibly chill for and just take this late. Smash is going to run to Angel but without the split not going to happen and how do I keep missing these kills on Centaur? They got him with just the concussive shot. Okay. I should just oh, never stop looking at this bottom lane. I suppose not. Looks like it was just a pretty straightforward Doom. Wasn't able to get the Stampede off in time, and they just chased him down with that slow. It was enough damage. Um, wasn't anticipating him to die, but I don't know. There you have it. Centaur feeding away yet another life. That's a 3-0 Doom. That is, I don't know, just going to have a ridiculous amount of farm. Um, yeah, the other lanes have been fairly passive. We're still waiting for Smash to make his next rotation. He does have his bottle back, and the courier is available for his team. Top lane, um, they're going to go onto the yep. Skyrath Mage. Burrow Strike hit onto the Bristleback, but now the Masoku Sanking and a charge up an Epicenter. You're doing a lot of damage to Angel. Burrow Strike on him as well. Ewo is going to teleport out safely, though. Sanking does give up his life. Spirit Bear is going to be killed, I believe, by the tower. So no gold going to any particular hero. I don't believe there's any assist mechanics with the bear. It is going to be a 1 for 2, actually, as Mihawk gets a little bit of revenge down on bottom lane, killing off the Doombringer. I just keep on missing stuff on the bottom lane. I don't know what the hell's wrong with me, but it is a 2 for 1 going in favor of Not Today. Now Ancient Apparition has the crucial level 6 mark. The bear has gone for the Maelstrom as well, so no huge Relic Rush, which I think he probably could have gotten away with this game, but he's going to go for a very safe item regardless. Yeah, it's going to accelerate his farm in a similar way to the Radiance. Um, Mjolnir... Scales a little bit better into the super late game. Um, but yeah, right now it's just going to be that maelstrom for him. It's going to be pretty solid in the next couple of team fights, and we'll allow him to push down lanes. Radiance is probably what he could have gone for, but I think it's more a personal choice. Um, I've seen Ewo play his own druid several times, and he more often than not goes for his maelstrom unless they're completely stopping. And this game currently is pretty close. Uh, gold and experience advantage is negligible on either side. Centaur currently. Going to be roaming through the jungle. Might bump into Zender here. He's actually going to not find anybody. And there you go. The vision's going to go his way with uh, Skyrath Mage Ultimate dropping on Mihawk. Only about to half damage. The one who's going to fall is Zender. And all silent Skyrath Mage Ultimate lands through as well as there's a torrent. But it's not needed. It's now Smash. Going to start smashing into Angel. There's a boat coming through. It's only going to land on the bear, I think. The bear is going to be stunned up. And well, losing the bear would be terrible. It's a nice bro strike comes through on both Zek as well as Angel. Now they're focused down Angel. The cold feed is going to proc onto him. The torrent again going to land up on the bear. And he was dropping very low to those quills spamming out. Now they chase down Zack. They do have another burrow strike and they're going to use it. one more auto attack from the Sand King. Will be enough to secure that kill. Now the 2-1 tower should fall suit. I'm not sure there's much the Union game can do to defend against this. They are going to TP back in with the Death Prophet. This Crypt Storm could be annoying, but now Doom goes away of Misoku, but oh, the Doom's in the middle of a lot of heroes. Misoku might fall to that Doom, but Benyaz is going to be the trade in double edge lands on both of them. A full team wipe all said and done, and now Zender wants back in. Smash is still alive and does have the Blink Clap, but can't really dive into that. The Sand King uh, didn't see if he got denied. No, he did not. Uh, just falling on the back line set. Doom tick damage. Yeah, not today. Could have gotten away with only losing their Ancient Apparition and then denying the Sand King. Unfortunately, they were a little bit unprepared for the Sand King to be brought down that low from the Doom. But when it's all said and done, not today. Take a fantastic fight there. UG, they were caught so split up, and not today with the Brewmaster as well as that beautiful Centaur, Hoofsomp Double Edge, and that secondary part of the fight. 
it was just easy cleanup, and the lone druid was pretty much just going to town at everyone. No one was actually focusing him, as UG, they, they were kind of like split between running and fighting. I think once the boat missed from UG, that was when they should have called it, but uh, when you already use the boat, you're kind of a little bit antsy to just fight somehow. But going into that from not today, that was just so dangerous. Now the centaur has his blink dagger up, and with him having the blink dagger, plus smash having the blink dagger, not today have just gotten so much more dangerous. They have all the power in the initiation, and as long as they don't get caught out like Masoku might get caught out over in mid, then they're going to be just fine in this game, because they're going to be calling, again, all the shots. Masoku is going to be found, although Burst Strike up to the high ground is going to be just fine. Looks like, not today, they're actually going to defend their tier 1 tower, and this is something that they could do. They don't have a split for another 10 seconds. Mihawk going to jump in for still stop onto Benyaz. We'll get silence before the double edge, though. Ice Blast going to come in boat as well. The boat is going to hit only onto Masoku. This is a sanking that is an acceptable loss, although he is invisible. He will be brought down eventually. Mr. Claire is going to be dropped on the smash. He's in a very awkward position. Has a split available. Will clap and split in his own jungle. In the meantime, Iwo going to go to town onto Zek. He will be brought down very slowly, but he will go down in the end. Angel now stunned up behind that tier 1 tower. Again, he's getting burned down pretty low as Misko is being focused down by trying to kill off Benyaz. Lives with 4 HP. Angel still off to the side is still alive. He will be brought down eventually. But after all said and done, is that going to be a 3 for 3 trade? I believe it is. Basically both teams fighting two team fights and uh, one on the left side, one on the right side. And I'd say either side won their respective team fight. But uh, it's overall an even trade. Yeah, I would say so as well. The uh, Doom surviving with 4 HP is actually pretty crazy. The Ancient Apparition just needed a little bit more damage. <clears throat> I'm not sure if that was just a high-low roll on his auto attack or what happened there, but escaping by the skin of his teeth is going to make it an even trade. Ancient Apparition Ice Blast is going to fly to the fountain, but Benyaz did TP back there instead of walking. Had he walked, that might have been a kill onto him, but he'll just be annoyed by that little extra debuff. Definitely worth the shot from the Ancient Apparition. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? The ultimate has a very low cooldown anyway. Um, so they'll be up in 10 seconds. Nothing lost. Ewo's holding on to a pretty nice chunk of change right there. 2,000 gold on that lone druid. Maybe a Hyperstone to be picked up for a Mjolnir. But also the Sand King has his Blink Dagger coming up shortly as well. He's 500 gold away from that. And if he continues fighting, then he will get probably further and further away. As UG, they're just going to go for round 2 on this mid lane. Not today. They don't have a split, and it's going to be a long time until they do. Although I think they can defend, it's probably not going to be as devastating as previous. As the Bristleback is, you know, rather tanky. He does have that hood, their cloak on him, rather. And he's going to be able to withstand a lot of the damage coming up from Not Today, especially if he's, for the most part, ignored. UG, they're not pushing fast enough, though, so they're going to have to commit an exorcism here. Otherwise, they're going to lose a Tier 2 tower in exchange. The bear with the Demolish is just going to town up on top lane. Yeah, Tier 2 tower up top is almost certainly going to fall, and there you go, Lone Druid does not get the last hit, is snagged by that range creep in mid. They are going to throw a clap towards a couple of illusions, and they get the tower there. It's just a straight-up trade right now that's going to favor not today, as they managed to find themselves a Tier 2 tower. Mihawk's they still have... jump in, he's oh. going to catch two with the hoof stomp, and the split as well. Burrow Strike, Epicenter, onto Benyaz, as well as Zek. Boat's going to come in, hit onto two, Mihawk is going to get with that as well. Ice Blast coming in, as Leo does come in from the back, do much of the Lone Druid, won't really do anything, but not today, they've already lost two. In the meantime, Brewmaster taking down the Skyrath Mage, now going to try to reinforce his bear, he's taking a lot of damage, and the bear won't go down, but the main druid will. Smash has got a bail now, and UG, they get out with everyone, barely surviving. That was just such awkward initiation from the centaur. I don't know if they should have gone in on that. Yeah, I didn't think they'd go, and, well, maybe they shouldn't have. It's one for three, they jumped in, and then they just all died. Um, yeah, I think they should have just been happy with that trade. It could have gone better for them if they found a cleaner initiation, but it was just so messy. Um, yeah, the survivor, Brewmaster, he's going to find himself a completed Aghanim Scepter at about 18 minutes in. Uh, going to be good timing for a smash, and this next team fight is going to be pretty huge for them. Although 70 seconds until he has another split available. Ancient Apparition down in bottom is going to purchase himself a medallion. It'll help them get Roshan, but it's also going to delay his Scepter. Not sure if I'm a huge fan of this choice. Um... But yeah, Zen King Blink Dagger in the next fight should be pretty huge. Angel Joel going to bump into him, but he might have bumped into the wrong neighborhood here. The Burst Strike's going to miss. The Hoof Stump is still available. He's going to walk backwards, so he has a Blink Dagger now. They're not even going to go for it. The Lone Druid, a little bit late to the party, will back off as well. I don't know how you miss a Burrow Strike like that. You literally just click the skill and then click the hero, but... Regardless, the Bristleback is going to slip away, and now Sand King has a Blink Dagger, which is currently a surprise, no longer a surprise for the UG side. Epicenter is not available, and Split I don't think is available either, but they're going to dive really deep for this. They're looking for the Skyrath Mage, but Ewo is already going to take a little bit of damage as Smash is going to try to reinforce. The Stampede is out. The Bear is going to get out of there as well. Blink in from the Centaur, actually. you got to calm down, Mihawk. 
teleportation out, and he should be just fine. X marks not going to be there in time. The Sand King might be the only one to go down, as he's going to get silenced as he drops down back to the earth. Silence is not going to wear out for enough time, I don't think. Burrow Strike? Oh, it's not going to be enough. The Scorched Earth is going to be what ultimately gets to kill on the Sand King. Not today. That was, again, just way too over-aggressive for them. And now they're going to be facing down a push. Ewo is on the mid lane, so it might be a Tier 2 for Tier 2 trade. And it looks like it will. He's doing some pretty sick damage there. But not today. I don't know if they could defend this. I don't know if they should defend this. Yeah, I think this is probably their best bet. They're going to force back at least one TP coming up from the Bristleback, but he might just die here. If they get a root onto him, he's dead. There's the root. They're not facing the front of him, so he's not taking as much damage as I thought he would. And now Angel going to turn onto this berry. Snots him up once, and then it's going to start bashing him down. But Blink 4 by Smash, he's going to get Drunken Haze, then a clap. I don't know what's actually going on. They're just having an awkward dance where everybody's fighting. And now, down in bottom, this is where the engagement might break out as Mihawk jumps in. He's going to get doomed. He's on the back lines. They lose themselves their Ancient Apparition. There is Cold Feet on Kunkka. It is going to proc as Brewmaster finally jumps in with the split. He might be able to focus down Zek, and it looks like he will. He's going to lose his Fire Panda, and now the Urn Charge on Zek. He's going to be able to throw out a boat with his dying breath to give that buff to his buddies. Um, but other than that, it's not going to do much. As Masoku gets tagged by a Crip Storm, now they get a root on the Cristiano, but there's no follow-up. There's the Burrow Strike, but Masoku kind of jumped in a little deep there. Scarth Mage is going to fall. He drops dust to make sure that they can kill this, uh, get this kill on Masoku. Smash is still being pursued. Now Angel jumps in from the bottom lines as they kill the Sand King, and now we're looking for the Brewmaster. The Centaur Ultimate is now back up to cooldown, and they will use it to get Smash away to safety. He's potentially looking for a turn, but it's all going to be over. What a hectic engagement. Not today. They're just like so over eager to take these team fights. I think they could have been, again, happy with the fact that they got a two for two. They missed their Ancient Apparition Ice Blast to start things off, and that's never really a good sign. It hit literally nobody. No, not today. They also didn't use their uh, Epicenter in that last fight. So it's not going the greatest for not today because they're kind of not letting it. I mean, if they just took that tower trade and then maybe grouped up as five and then waited for a little bit more of a consolidated team fight, it could have gone a lot better for them, but they're just a little bit over eager. However, this is not over eager. They get, they're they getting a free pick on the Skyrath Mage, who for whatever reason decided it would be a good idea to face check the Centaur. Never a good idea, guys, so don't do that. He's going to be brought down very easily in the bottom lane, as is the tier one tower, so not today. They get a nice little win down on bottom, but uh, hopefully they don't go into instant suicide mode after taking that tower. Looks like they are going to, um, I don't know, restrain themselves and go to Rashawn. Cold Feet is going to proc, and they can make this pretty quickly with Medallion. They don't have Vlads on any of their heroes, and Ewo's next item is going to be an Assault Cuirass, but it's still fast enough. Um, UG don't have the best ways to jump into the pit. They have a boat, which is really good around the Roshan pit, but they're just not close enough. I think it's going to fall without much of contention. They're starting to rotate around there, but I don't think they can actually do stuff. Well, the smoke is going to pop onto Misoku. Now they burn strike onto the Kunkka that's just caught in a very awkward situation. Kunkka's going to die before he casts a single spell. Now the center ultimate going to be used to disengage. Where is it? No, the Brewmaster is going to jump straight in onto Angel. They try to face his front, but they're just not doing very much damage. That Bristleback is too darn tanky for them to focus down. Now with the Cold Feet, they might be able to do it in a nice burst strike epicenter on to three and now onto ben yaz double edge onto him sky page ultimate almost completely wisp but it might be enough to kill ewo with that doom onto him looks like ewo is going to lose his ages here but the bear is going to still survive this is going to be a full team wipe ultra kill for misoku by some amazing fact was able to get those last couple of kills um but yeah ewo actually doesn't lose his ages is able to survive with very little hp that was pretty insane i mean misoku his burst strikes have been really hit or miss this game but that is just that a, was a huge hit. hit. That epicenter burrow strike was huge with the AA combination. Oh man, that's just finger looking good. That's going to give them a free team wipe after the Roshan. And it looks like they might even get two towers off this as well. That fight just swung this game really, really far in favor of not today. The gold graphs are still updating, but it was an even game in golden experience up till this point. But that play, that small play of the Sand King, I guess huge play, that play of the Sand King, securing them that fight was huge in this game for not today now they're in firm control of the game they take two towers and they're going to get away with the aegis they could reset rearm wait for their split wait for their epicenter and then just go again because they're not going to use this hyperstone for a maelstrom they're going to go for an assault caress lots of survivability and suddenly death profits not doing as much damage they're going to smoke up and look for bottom lane zek is in a very awkward position as is angel but going for this bristle back i don't know if that's what they really want to do they're going to all jump in on zek once again rest in peace kanka they didn't see that one coming now angel going to get entangled taking a lot of damage from that minus armor the burst damage should be enough to kill off angel the stick charge is not going to help him 
enough. Mystic Flare was also used, though it will miss onto everyone as the Sanki is going to jump in one more time for Bird Strike. Smash there as well, and the Centaur, the blinking squadron of strength heroes, is just too much for Yuji to handle. And it looks like off of that, they're going to lose their Raxes here. They can't defend this. It's so terrible losing fights up against a lone druid, and this is the way that Not Today want to fight. They want to pick you apart, because if they try to do that when everybody's alive and available to defend, they're going to be in a lot of trouble when they do die, but this way, they're going to find themselves probably one, if not two, Raxes. I don't think there's a way that they can get them out of their base before the Lone Druid takes his melee barracks at the very least. There is going to be a torrent dropping on the bear, and they will, uh, Exercise a little bit of caution here as they are going to pull back. They still got the barracks, and at the end of the day, that's what matters. They also got a really nice team fight beforehand. I think that not today, they can just kind of rinse and repeat. You can wait for your lone druid to get his next item, which he is going to have now if he wants it. He can pick up the full Mjolnir, um, or whatever he wants. He could go for Basher. I don't think it matters. As long as lone druid is getting more items, that's pretty much all they need, and it is going to be a Basher. Can't go wrong with the Basher. That's uh, going to be a really serious annoyance for Yuji. They do have one BKB on the Doom, but really Doom with the BKB is not really a threatening hero. He's still holding on to that Ice Armor creep, the uh, Ogre Magi, I believe, but he's not actually doing anything. And now he's going to get jumped upon. The Clap is there, but he is going to pop the BKB. This is the seven second one. It's going to buy him a little bit of time, but he's still taking a ton of damage from this Fire Spirit. The rest of the UG side, they're right behind this, though, so maybe Smash getting a little bit over his head. He does have Mystico to help, and this, the uh, ultimate is going to last for quite a long time. The Blink out. Let's see if it's going to be in time, Smash. I believe it's not going to be in time. Now he's pretty much screwed, I would say. Mystico is still around to help him out, potentially, but there's the X marks back into a Mystic Flare, and the Brewmaster will go down, and... Crucially, the Ancient Apparition stuck around for a little bit too long now, as he's going to get thrown up into the air all the way through. We'll throw up the Death Prophet in exchange, but the base is in trouble because the bear is in there just going to town on the melee racks. As Misko running distraction at this point while three heroes are chasing him. The Doom has teleported back, but I don't know if there's anything the Doom could do about this. The bear is going to, once again, play a little bit safer, and he will back off, but... Not today, they go really aggressive onto that Doom and the BKB helping him to survive, but again, he's not having any threat. The Spirit Bear is slowed down by Snot as well as Atos. I think he very will likely go down, although it's going to be very slow. They can't chase him. Phase Boots too strong. Assault Karas too strong. And not today, they lose two heroes, don't really gain anything in return, so maybe they have to uh, calm down just a little bit. One Raxus is nice, but killing off a Doom with the BKB without your lone Druid there, that's uh, pretty ambitious. I actually did not know that the Spirit Bear could pick up a regeneration rune. Huh? You learn something new every day. Um, well, uh, Lone Druid, I think he probably could have just YOLO'd into that bear because it probably would have cost him his bear, but he was focusing down the melee bear, so that's going to regenerate oh, up. Go for um, round two. BKB, is it going to help him again? Ice Blast is going to come in, will do literally nothing, but they force out another BKB charge, and here's the bear. This is the death of Benyaz. This time, there's three heroes, just enough, and Mihawk going to get hit with the Doom. Boat's going to come in with Torrent, do some pretty nice damage to Ewo, but he still has the Aegis. He doesn't really care. Easy picks. Yep. I don't know, there's just so much action going around on this map. The Doom, his BKB's done very little to nothing. It's a fairly low cooldown right now, but then again, that also means that it's, I don't know, more or less just a item in his inventory that does nothing. We do have an x marks on the Lone Druid, he's focused down the barracks, but now the jump in from the Brewmaster, he's going to focus down the Death Prophet, who's now just going to be ripped to shreds as Ewo, gets himself a kill on the Kunkka. Death Prophet buys back and wants to get back into this action as the pipe comes out from the center. They should just take this barracks, but maybe they want to take Angel instead. He gets rooted down to the ground. Now the range barracks is going to be focused down by the bear. The bear is going to be dropping pretty darn low, and the melee barracks still stands, but now the Ancient Apparition Ice Blast, if they kill <clears throat> onto the Death Prophet, could be huge. First Strike's going to miss, but the Epicenter still gets a couple of charges. Now Angel drops, dominating spree for Mihawk. Four Heroes down, that's at least two lanes of racks, if not more. The Skyrath Mage is fighting up against Ewo, but Ewo has an Aegis, he doesn't care, and now he's going to root down the Skyrath Mage for good measure, and that's going to be at least two lanes and probably everything. That's GG Go next, called out by Union Gaming. Not surprising, it was so close for so long, but then at the very end, not today, they win like one fight, and then they transition into a lane of barracks. One of the strengths of Lone Druid, he just mows to his towers so quickly. Alright guys, this is the best of two, so the game number two is going to be coming up very shortly. Not today, we're going to be going up against Union Gaming one more time, and then we're going to be heading on to some different teams. So stick around guys, there's going to be more games coming very shortly.